It's been nearly 250 years since mountain lions have populated the eastern United States. Their absence is now causing effects that can be felt through the entirety of the ecosystem. Humans cannot pick and choose what is a healthy, functioning ecosystem. And that's what Europeans decided to do, eradicating mountain lions from the entire eastern portion of the United States. As of the year 2024, a major issue is overpopulation in white-tailed deer. A prime example is New York. The state is only 54,000 square miles. Yet current population estimates say that the deer herd is about 900,000 animals. Although some reports say that the number is exceeding 1 million. This means in certain areas the population density is as high as 18 to 20 animals per square mile. High population densities in turn lead to a quick spreading of zoonotic diseases. Not only do zoonotic diseases affect wild animals, but they also can affect livestock as well. White-tailed deer are known for spreading diseases such as bovine tuberculosis, as well as epizootic hemorrhagic disease. Both of these diseases kill more livestock every single year in the United States than wolves and mountain lions do. Current management for overpopulation in deer populations mainly relies on residential hunters. Yet across the eastern United States, there are remote regions of wilderness in which hunters are not able to consistently hunt every single year. This means that there are regions in which adult white-tailed deer do not feel predation pressure. With an increasing population combined with a warming climate, white-tailed deer have been able to push farther and farther north, reaching habitats in which they did not formerly inhabit. This has led to the species having more interactions with northern moose populations. Whitetail have evolved alongside a parasite commonly known as a brain worm. As the name suggests, these worms are found within the central nervous system of whitetails. Yet due to co-evolving along with these parasites, they have developed a tolerance to them. Yet moose have not. Oftentimes when moose are affected by these brain worms, it can lead to mortality. In a state such as New Hampshire where moose populations have been reduced due to fluctuations in winter tick populations, additional parasitic pressure could lead to consequences for the population of the moose in New Hampshire. of mountain lions into the northeastern ecosystem. Having a plan for conservation and management can help mountain lions be introduced into the northeastern ecosystem seamlessly without need for human and wildlife conflict. What is needed in order for mountain lions to repopulate the northeastern United States is for habitat connectivity to increase. By increasing habitat connectivity, not only are we assisting in reintroducing mountain lions, we are also helping to ensure genetic diversity of our own northeastern mammal populations. Most people who live in areas with mountain lions have never even gotten a glance at them. These animals are rarely seen, yet have such a major part of their ecosystem. They inhabit nearly all of North and South America and have shaped the ecology of both continents. An individual deer may want to live without predators, yet if their population goes in check, it will lead to ecological consequences leading to suffering for the deer around them. Mountain lions help regulate deer population. Having a regulated population helps to increase the resources and space needed for the overall livelihood of the entire deer population.
When you finish this video, I ask you not to think of mountain lions as just a species. I ask you to think of them for the effect that they have on this ecosystem. It's not about what we want for this ecosystem. It's about what this ecosystem needs.